Good morning, y'all. So as I was up this morning, um, getting ready and all of this stuff, I was contemplating, what are we going to do? Because I, um, I want to do something. So I was like, should we go to Starbucks and get a matcha tea latte? What should we do this morning? And so as I come down the stairs, y'all know, y'all know, my baby made me some coffee. And here's the thing. This just dawned on me. Y'all might be saying, okay, this is what he does for you every day. First of all, he doesn't do it for me every day. But he does do it for me most days. And the thing about it is, every time I see it, I appreciate it so much because I don't expect it or take for granted that he is going to make me some coffee. So this is always a pleasant welcome surprise. And it says, love you on the bottom. You know, so this and, and the fact that even to write this means that he consciously goes into this drawer, finds him a marker and does this. Like, I do not take any of that for granted. I do not because he does not have to make me a dag on thing. He really don't. In our relationship, we live a self-sufficient, independent relationship. And I think what that means is we don't practice codependency. We don't. He never expects anything from me. Like he doesn't say you didn't wash my clothes or you didn't do this or you didn't do that. And I don't expect anything from him. So everything he does for me is truly a gift. And I, everything I do for him, I hope he thinks it's a gift too. Um, so yeah, this is a beautiful gift. Thank you so much, baby. Um, and then I want to talk to y'all because y'all have not been learning y'all lessons. Y'all have not been learning the lesson. So, I'm going to talk to y'all when we get in the car. Oh, but before I talk to y'all, before we get in the car, let me tell y'all something else. I'm listening. In the morning, I try to listen to um, awesome things. <laughs> um, and what that means is something that's going to feed my mind and set my tone for the day. So, that may be Abraham Hicks. And lately, it's been Neville Goddard. So, right now... I'm listening to The Power of Unlimited Imagination, and it's an audio book, and you can find these for free on YouTube, okay? This one is an um, hour and 52 minutes long, almost 53, so hour 53, and I'm 34 minutes in, and I listen to this at normal speed because this is what penetrates and feeds my spirit. Y'all, I'm telling you. When it comes to manifestation and stuff like that, you have to. You have to retrain the way your mind works. And you don't retrain your mind in a sitting in a reading in the evening. You have to do it conditional. You have to do it consistently because that's how conditioning works. If you're an athlete, you don't go to the gym on one day and be like, boom, I got it. The muscle that you gain on that one day will go back to what it's used to being weak on condition, on train, on discipline. And the same thing goes for your mind. You have to train it daily, daily. So I encourage you to every day put yourself in the company of something uplifting. If that is reading the Bible, let it be reading the Bible, but please seek understanding and wisdom. Please seek that. And you might have to do that through the aid of um, um, study material study material, somebody that you trust. Ooh, when it comes to the Bible, ooh, I love Bill um, Winston. I haven't listened to him in so long. Where's my stuff? I know where it is. Because I cleared out in here, remember, when it was painting. But Bill Winston, he is a, uh, he's out of Chicago. Yes, 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 y'all. This is my guy. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Let me show y'all something. Boom. You see that? Bill Winston. And you see these? These are all his sermons. These are sermons. These, oh my God, these are so freaking good. And I had another one, The Blessing of Abraham, because I would let people use, borrow these, and sometimes I wouldn't get them back, y'all. But... Yeah, look at this. See how this one is the Blessings of Abraham, Abraham Volume 3? Where's Volume 1 and Volume 2? I'm telling you, I am obsessed. These are so freaking good. If you haven't heard of, the, of Bill Winston, go to his website. It's online. And look, you know I had this for a minute. Compact disc, y'all. Compact disc. But I'm telling you, this stuff right here, 
it's almost like these sermons are so good. I wish they were mine. I wish I was out there saying them, like giving it to y'all. These are so freaking good. Look at it, Gregory. Oh, my mentor, now my ancestor. Mm -mm -mm. There's more Dick Gregory. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, that's what I try to do first thing. And then, <laughs> after that, then I can go and watch the soap operas of YouTube. And that is the people who I support, the people who I enjoy, the other content creators out there doing their thing. But I love about y'all out there doing y'all thing is y'all are bringing in income for yourselves. Y'all bringing in a, another source of income for yourselves. Y'all are just doing things that you enjoy and that brings you pleasure. Um, and that's what we, y'all in me, that's what we're doing. And I love that for us. I love that for us. Um, but yeah, so let me get on the road and then we'll come back and lecture. I'm going to lecture y'all because clearly y'all haven't gotten a lecture in a long time. And clearly, no matter what I say, it's not reaching y'all. It is not reaching y'all. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. All right. So in one of the last videos I'm sitting in a tree, we see in one scene, Jay is doing a puzzle. And then he says, I don't know if he said it on camera. I don't know. But what happened is he says he wanted a puzzle table. I'm like, we're not getting a puzzle table. One, there's no room for a puzzle table. And two, we don't need a puzzle table. And three, we don't even do puzzles. But he expresses he wants this puzzle table. It's beautiful. I haven't even seen the puzzle table. And that, this, and the other. And he might have said something like, I deserve a puzzle table. And I'm like, no, you don't. And so... Y'all, my lovely people in the comments were saying, get Jay a puzzle table. Jay deserves a puzzle table. And my response to that is still the same. No. This is what I have observed for years, for years, for years, living in the suburbs. And I've always like made mental note of this. People in the suburbs have a tendency to take on a hobby on day one. And on day two, they go out and they buy everything that hobby ever, need, ever needed. Just because they can. Because they got excess money. They got some extra income. They got some whatever. They got credit cards. So they go out and they will buy all of the things. If they decide day one, hmm, I think I'm going to take up golfing day two. They go buy everything ever needed for golfing. And it will sit in their garage. And it will sit in the spaces that are used for something else. But because they ran out of space long ago. Because they've already filled up their home. Now their things are bleeding over into other areas. Garages, basements, corners of attics, storages, storage units, you know. I never admired that. I always looked at it as a waste of money. Because rarely do they keep up with these side hobbies, these things. And they will jump to the next thing just as quick. Biking. Now we got the most expensive bike, all of the bike gear, all of the this, you know, whatever the latest craze is, suburban people will jump in it and buy all the things to fulfill it. I almost fell into this trap once when my son was in the fifth grade. He said he wanted to play the saxophone. And I said, you know what, baby, you deserve to play the saxophone because he is a musical child. He is a creative child. He is so freaking talented. So I great mother I am went out and I purchased him a saxophone. I bought a saxophone. That child played that saxophone for all of two minutes. I don't even think he lasted a whole season or whatever you call it of lessons with the saxophone before he decided he don't want to play the saxophone. He don't like the saxophone. Well, you know what we have in our house right now? A whole saxophone that nobody knows how to use. That's what we have. What I should have done is rented a saxophone to let him try it out to see if he really liked it. I should not have taken ownership of a thing. I think I paid about $500 for that saxophone. And that was a used saxophone. $500 for a used saxophone. See, I'm still a little 
conscious of my life and my finances. But yeah, I should have rented a saxophone, which was probably something like $30 a month in lieu of. But you know what people will try to say? But buying a saxophone is a better investment. If you rent a saxophone for $30 a month, that's X, Y, and Z a year. But guess what? It may not even get to that because somebody may not even stick with that when i first started doing snowboarding i didn't go out and buy all the snowboard equipment i did not every time i went out to the mountains i rented equipment why because i did not know if my soul was serious about snowboarding see the thing about it is you have to separate yourself separate you from you because in the beginning you may think that oh this is something i'm gonna do forever because you're a child our minds are children okay so our, our soul, our spirit may say, we're going to do this forever. So why not make the investment now? It's going to be cheaper in the long run. But the real you may start a thing and then start realizing like, uh, I really don't like this. Or uh, the novelty wore off. Or uh, I'm not dedicated to this as I thought I would be. So I rented equipment for a good, maybe a good year or two. Until I realize that no this is something I really love and I'm super passionate about then and only then did I start allowing myself to peruse the sale aisle of my local ski shop we ended up with a snowboard me and Gwen for $50 because she happened to be in Colorado on the same weekend that there was this huge sale it's called Bargain Spell Backwards, Bargains Backwards, Knee Grab or something like that. And they had all this equipment and she was able to get it for pennies. If I would have went out and ran with my childish gut desire of what I want, I would have purchased $300, $400 snowboards, boots, all of that stuff. Instead of being patient and disciplined. That's what you got to teach yourself to do. All of y'all failed the test by acting like Jay deserves a card table and all go buy a $20 card table. Here's the thing, the latte factor. I know that you guys have watched some um, financial gurus and their, their way of thinking of saying, you buying a cup of Starbucks is not what's keeping you broke, right? $3, $4, $5, not keeping you broke. Because you know how some people say, you're buying Starbucks, don't buy Starbucks, you're buying Starbucks. And I get it. See, here's the thing. Nobody makes the freaking difference. No, I feel like both sides are wrong. The cup of Starbucks is not keeping you broke. You know what's keeping you broke? The Starbucks mentality. That's what's keeping you broke. When you go somewhere and you say it's only $5, that's what's keeping you broke. Because it adds up and you stop treating everything in your life as if it's only, it's only, it's only, it's only $40 for a table. It's only $20 for a table. The next place you go, it's only $5 for this. It's only $7 for that. Next thing you know, by the end of your month, you spent $500 in unbudgeted items that you didn't plan on spending and you don't know how you did that. You did that because of the Starbucks mentality, not the Starbucks itself. So in my life, and what I try to show y'all is the discipline of just saying no and delayed gratification. Delayed gratification says on day one, Jay is doing a puzzle and he wants a, a puzzle table. I say no, and we're going to sit here and we're going to wait and we're going to see what happens. You know what happens? Jay did a puzzle since. So if we were to acted off an instinct and bought that puzzle table when he when his flesh rose up and desired it what we would have right now is a puzzle table with no puzzle on it and no place to sit no place to go so it would have been in the basement collecting dust and you would have realized that it's just easier and simpler that when you do decide to do a puzzle to just do it on a freaking dining room table like you've been doing and we have a card table in the basement we do people say that what about a card table i have a card table i have a card table with four chairs and i did buy it used from some suburbanite who had this table because i'm sure at one point in their life they felt like they needed a table then they realized we don't even have space for a table and so now they're selling that table for a fraction of what they purchased that table for so yeah, I'm not in the habit of just collecting stuff. And I'm not in the habit of just wanting things to just be wanting things. Check your desire. Check why you feel you 
think, buying the things. Where is that coming from? Where is that coming from? And what is that really accomplishing? I feel like in life, it is all about balance. That's why this is the fun and the budget act. It's the act of balancing the things we want to do with the things we have to do. Okay? It's the balancing act of living for today yet preparing for tomorrow. It's a balancing act. It's an act, guys. We actively, consciously choose what we're doing with our money. Okay? I said... Instead of buying a puzzle table you don't need, because even when you think about Starbucks, we're saying, oh, it's only $5. But guess what? That $5 made somebody else a billionaire. One $5 at a time, right? Mm -hmm. It's knowing where you are. We're not billionaires where we just have an infinite number of $5 to just keep giving away when it's not necessary. So I say this. In life, we choose what we're investing in. We're invested in our future and we're invested in our joy. A card table is not our joy. It's not necessary. My joy is traveling. Therefore, what you're going to see is a higher amount of my funds go towards traveling. And it's not going to go towards a lot of other areas that don't bring me joy. So you're not going to see it go towards clothing, go towards like hair and nails and all of that stuff. Now, you are going to see me doing that because that's such as life. We got to get dressed, right? But you're not going to see me going out shopping every week because that's my thing. But for some people, that is their thing. And if that's your thing, choose that thing. But do not try to choose all of the things. Don't try to choose all of the things. We are not at a place in our lives where we can healthily, healthy, healthily sustain that. We're not multimillionaires here. Where we just have this endless flow of income coming in. Where we can sustain that. But guess what, babies? This is why we're practicing, we're practicing this now on the level where we are. Because you've already seen the stories where people are multimillionaires. And they are bringing in all of this extra money. And then years later, that slows down. And then they sit back and they tell you, I wish I would have done this, this, and this. That I splurged too much. And now I have nothing to show for it. So see, that hits you on any level. So that's why we're starting where we are. Where I am today is Tanisha loves to travel. But guess what? Tanisha can't sustain buying first class tickets every time she goes somewhere. Because that will be tapping into Tanisha's retirement fund. That will be tapping into her future security. That will be tapping into her emergency fund. That will be tapping into all of that. So if I was going someplace and everybody's traveling first class, it's okay. I'm going to sit back here. We're all getting to the same place. Where I am right now in my life cannot sustain to act like I'm where you guys are. And I say that seriously because I'm about to go to Kenya and guess what? Some of my friends are traveling first class. And it's all right. Because what I know for sure is I will be there one day. But today is not the day. Today is not the day. And that is okay. I'm going to have a great time in the back of the plane with my man like we in first class we might even order us some extra first class drinks we'll be okay but what we're not gonna do is pay for first class tickets we're not doing that we're not there yet and it's all right it's all right to be where you are and it's all right to say no and exercise delayed gratification i see things all the time that i want right and you know what i do i put it on my wish list and at the end of the month if i have money left over from living my monthly life I get to go through and buy myself something from that wish list. But more often than not, I just choose to put the extra money towards my long-term goals. You get to do that. Because sometimes I, I realize that at the end of the month, eh, I don't even want that thing anymore. I don't even need that thing anymore. Oh, oh my goodness, somebody gave me that thing anyway. That's my lesson. So this was never a conversation about who deserves what or who don't deserve anything. It's a conversation about just say no because otherwise you will build up the habit of getting yourself all of the things that run across your mind in the moment just because it ran across your mind in the moment and you haven't told yourself you haven't learned how to tell yourself or those around you whether it's your kids your spouse your family no these are the building blocks these are the fundamentals to building and keeping wealth 